unemployment, retirees benefits, and in a municipality, that is all handled by the town um, with the school side really purely for operations. But in a regional school district, um, it's imperative that we budget properly for all of those fixed costs uh, and at the same time understand what our students need. We submitted and, and uh, the school committee approved uh, our district improvement plan. And there are five key goals that we have addressed on that improvement plan. The first one is to continue to refine our curriculum uh, so that we can increase student achievement. Um, we know that we have um, a special ed population that uh, takes um, resources to make sure that we also give them the best opportunity to achieve. Um, and that is a very important uh, goal because that ties into uh, the accountability standards that the state uh, expects us to hit. Uh, we also know that we need to look at uh, technology, assess what our technology needs are, and then find out how to uh, fund them. One of the key areas is to do a needs assessment on the high school. Uh, the high school opened in 1970 and it has the same windows and doors and floors and heating system uh, that it had in 1970. And I liken it to our own houses. We usually uh, have replaced the windows and the heating system uh, in the last 45 years. And so when students look at the physical plant that is currently what we have, we uh, do not fare well in comparison to other districts. And so we do lose some students um, that, that decide to school choice to other districts. We may not be the final choice, but I think we should be the first choice. And um, that I think is, from a selfish point of view, uh, financially, um, the smart thing to do because as our student enrollment declines, uh, our state financing through Chapter 70 declines with it. At the end of the day, it does come down to financial uh, uh, backing and, and to be able to have the appropriate money budgeted appropriately and spent appropriately on the right areas to translate into the very best education that we can uh, provide for our kids so that they can be competitive and prepared when they leave us um, for whatever they pursue. Quite simply, uh, the federal government uh, has the law that governs public education, which is the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965, ESEA. It has been reauthorized and titled many things over the years. Most recently, in 2001, 
uh, it became known as No Child Left Behind, NCLB. So that law still is maintained on the books. However, what happened was through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, there was a little line item attached to that called Race to the Top. And that was a $5 billion line that states could compete for grant funding. Massachusetts is a race to the top state. Uh, we, we have got our award on the second round uh, with a total of $250 million. The primary funding source in Massachusetts is, is called Chapter 70, which is the Mass General Law that governs the funding of, of uh, education, public education in our state. That current formula was created uh, with Ed Reform in 1993. And the metrics that went into that were from 1990, 1991. And we all know that the cost to heat our houses has increased dramatically since 1990, 1991. And yet the formula has remained the same. So statewide, that Chapter 70 formula was short. Currently, the state, to their credit, has a Foundation Budget Review Commission that's in the process of holding public hearings now uh, across the state. And I think while they may not um, want to come up with the number of two and a half billion dollars to increase Chapter 70, I think they, they should look at how districts and how towns receive that money. My goal is to be very transparent both with the facts and the figures, as well as the reasons why we need what we need. The mission for, that I have given to our administrative team is for them to look at their needs, be realistic, be prepared to advocate for what they are asking for, and then present that as, as the total. From that number, depending upon what it is, we will then uh, look at it realistically compared to where we were this year with what we expect the funding to be for next year and then be able to articulate and advocate for that particular budget. You know, there's, there's many different lines in the school budget. There are, it's a constant rebalancing and repositioning. I'm a big believer that you plan for what you need and then you spend what you have. Now we also have other funds that come into the district. We um, receive rental income because the collaborative rent space from us. Uh, we have uh, students who tuition in to our district because we have a program that they want and we also receive state and federal grants. Um, so that allows us to to use additional funds to deliver the education that we that we need to do. And uh, that, I think that is going to be one of my goals this year, to make sure that folks understand how we build the budget, what's in it, uh, and how we uh, are going to spend the money. The high school, and they rate the schools level one through five. And level one schools are the highest achieving schools who are making uh, and meeting all of the goals to close the achievement gap, to make sure that the these that students are learning how, by however we measure it. And so our high school is a level one building, and uh, the students and the staff uh, should be congratulated for that achievement. Um, it's the second year in a row that we are a level one school. That speaks well for the effort and the quality of the instruction and, and the talent of the learning. There's a lot of great teaching going on. There's a lot of terrific learning going on. Um, I think the challenge is to make sure that we uh, maintain and give our teachers the resources they need uh, to continue to be successful and to give our students the opportunities that they deserve to be able to explore uh, areas of interest. But I think overall, I've been very impressed with the caliber of the education we offer, the caliber of, of our, our teachers and faculty and staff, as well as the, uh, the commitment by our students. And uh, I certainly uh, have been uh, energized and, and excited by what I have seen so far, and I look forward to 
to taking us forward. Um, so in, in closing, I, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to uh, to uh, speak to everyone. Um, I think that um, the consistency of leadership is important, but I also think that the stewardship of, of making sure that you know what's important in the district and what the history and the traditions tell us is important is something that I really look forward to in my first year. And, um, you know, I, I have a three-year contract and I'm looking forward to each one of those years. And um, after that, we'll see. But it's, uh, it's exciting to be here. It's a place that I want to be um, at this stage of my career. And I think um, that we have great opportunities and uh, look forward to uh, meeting as many people as I can uh, over the next several months and working for the very best education we can offer our students. Thank you.